I think it's sufficient to quote the statute. And the statute says litigation, actual litigation, or potential litigation. Uh, there, and if you want to give more information than that, that's, a pol I think, a policy decision for the county commissioners with the advice of the prosecuting attorney. Um, some, some jurisdictions may do it that way, and I certainly have no objection to it, but I don't think it's required under the act. But I would defer to the prosecuting attorney for his, opinion, his or her opinion on that. That you would need to notify the officer, not the public generally, but the officer. There's been a complaint against you on this grounds. Um, and then now there's a couple things I think at the end here um, there's a couple types of proceedings that are exempted entirely from the Open Public Meetings Act the biggest one probably is collective bargaining when you're doing issues relating to collective bargaining strategy for collective bargaining union negotiations or the discussions themselves um, those can be done well actually it's not even executive session it's exempted out of the Open Public Meetings Act um, the dis any final approval of the contract will be done at an open meeting, but all the bargaining negotiations and discussions can be done outside an open meeting process. And if you think about it, I think this makes sense because it is a negotiation. There's going to be two sides to this. If you have to disclose your position and all your discussion publicly and they don't, it puts the public officials at a disadvantage. So I think that's just an attempt to make a level playing field uh, for those kind of decisions. And the other one would be quasi-judicial proceedings, where you have a quasi-judicial issue that's been presented to you. The decision, again, has to be made in open meeting, um, but the discussion about it could be done in, in executive session. And those, again, are exempted out of the Open Public Meetings Act. I think under the Open Public Meetings Act, you could, the discussion itself could be done in an executive session. Then you come out and have to do a vote in, in the open meeting. But the discussion on a quasi-judicial matter uh, could be done in ex in executive session. So that's right. That would be an example of where you could have done that. Now, lastly, if you do violate this, um, the main sanction is that anything that's done at an improper meeting is void. It's like it didn't happen. Any action that uh, ordinance, resolution, or order that is done at an improper meeting is void. Um, it will have to be redone again at a public meeting with, pub with, with the public present. Um, potentially, there is a sanction that says a member of a governing body who knowingly participates in an illegal meeting could be subject to a $100 fine. And if a suit is brought against a, a, a public agency um, and the citizen prevails or whoever brings the suit prevails, then the judge may award costs and attorney's fees to the citizens who prevails for enforcing the Open Public Meetings Act. So that's my presentation. If there's any other questions, I'd be glad to. Yeah, under the Open Meetings Act, that's right. There isn't any particular requirement for notice on regular meetings. The meeting itself has been noticed. The public it does know that you'll be meeting at a certain time and place every week or, or whatever it is. And then the specifics of how you let them know about the agenda really is a decision, policy decision, not a legal decision under the Open Meetings Act. It's, it's at the discretion of the governing body whether to have a public comment period. There could be some meetings where you would do that and some meetings that you wouldn't do that. That depends on your own rules of procedure. And then the same point about if you do allow public comment, the, it is up to you how long you want to allow individual citizens to speak. Um, and, and that depends somewhat on, again, your either formal rules of procedure or what you decide as a body to do and the chair decides. Uh, though, again, those are issues that really aren't covered. Those are just open by the, op they're not covered by the Open Meetings Act. So that is discretionary. And that's what this was, this is not an attempt to say that you may not want to do, go beyond this or write openness up for comment. Uh, that's, that's certainly uh, beneficial in a lot of cases. But this is what the act requires, right? And it doesn't address those issues. So that is that is a that is within the discretion of the governing body. The intent of this is for open government to have the citizens have access to the decision making process and what's going on. Um, that's what's behind it, uh, and that's what we're talking about. He's talking about people approaching him uh, outside meetings and stuff. I agree. When in doubt, generally open it up. I, I think that is a safe rule to follow. But it also doesn't mean, of course, there are situations where you don't have to do it, and there may be reasons why you wouldn't. But the presumption is, or, or, or the, the uh, purpose of the law is for open government, and it's to be broadly interpreted. That's exactly right. I agree with that.
they're not requirements. You're right. They're not requirements that you meet in executive session. They allow you to meet in executive session. But one thing to keep in mind, if you do meet in executive session, it is meant to be confidential. I do think that follows. And that's not an option then, at least in my view, for anybody who's in that executive session to come out and discuss with other people what went on there. So the decision whether to go in executive session, I think, is you, you could decide to hold it at an open, in an open meeting. But once you go in executive session, a confidentiality attaches to that. So, um, yeah, in some way, and of course, when I was talking about two public comment being an option, uh, I wasn't thinking at that point about a formal public hearing where they are invited to come and comment. That's different. And there is some, there has to be some opportunity for the public at that type of a hearing. Um, I don't know. There's practical issues there. Yeah, ideally, or you should, I think, in some way, have an arrangement that the public can, that, that is interested in, in listening at the meeting. Um, I would suggest, if possible, or if there is another meeting site, that you adjourn and go to a site that is large enough to hold that, everybody who wants to participate. Or I don't know if there's a way to have it broadcast out in an area where they could listen. I mean, there's a real practical issue there that you're dealing with. but. But in some way, I, I do think that every effort should be made that's, that's at all reasonable to try to accommodate the people that show up. And if, if you need to move the meeting site even or, or to a different location, that is an option. And that would be the other option I would recommend is that then continue it over and hopefully people, you would, everybody who wants to with, within reason can come and, 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 and listen anyway and, and have some limited opportunity to comment. And I assume you put some limit on people's comment time period so that you know they don't have to even at a public hearing you don't have to have an unlimited right for each citizen to comment as long as they want problem to me is that that they are supposed to be able to 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 listen and respond to what the other people have to say and so you don't want to me a situation you don't want is where someone some of the comments somebody never got to hear or have access to because then they, their opportunity to rebut that is gone. So in some way, you need to come up with a system where, the, where everyone knows what was presented at that hearing and they can rebut with their own evidence. We've gone for three hours or something. I think you could say additional comments will be accepted in writing. Um, you know, this is how to do it. This is the procedure. And, and then make those available and open. There, I think that would work. I think you could do that. And I, and I again, always on these, I'm deferring to your prosecuting attorney for the specific advice, but that would be the way I, I think you could handle that. So everybody who wanted input on the record officially before the commissioners to, to be heard and, and have their point of view, uh, either either verbally presented or in writing, would, would do so. Well, I, I, I think every effort that's within possible reason should be made that it's people have the right. The statute, and that's the main yeah. Order. yeah. Well, that's right. You can't have disruptive meeting, but you do have to have, I, I think, in some way, an opportunity to get people who want to be at the meeting in attendance. I do think that what has to happen is there has to be a good faith on the part of the governing body that the people, which, well, I don't get argue that, that I think there is from the comments I've heard, that the people are allowed to attend. And most of the time, I think this is probably never an issue. The rare occasion that it does come up where you've got a situation, you've got an overflow crowd, it sounds like they're trying to accommodate that. If they can move it, they move it. Uh, but I don't know at, at what point finally it becomes impractical to accommodate the, everyone who's there. I do think that the law does, and, and every effort has to be made to provide a forum where everyone can attend and participate and to the extent that they're allowed to participate. And I, I don't know the details of how you work that out. Maybe the people, maybe you do set up chairs in the hallway and I, you, know, you don't want to violate the fire code. Maybe you allow uh, the people who, who, some people don't care, they say that's fine, I'll be okay in the hall, the people that want to be inside. I think I think there's practical ways, at least 99% of the time, you can deal with this stuff. Yep. My sense of what I'm hearing is they're doing their best. They want everyone who comes to attend the meeting. And you have an overflow crowd. Maybe you adjourn it to the next night and reschedule it at a different place. I mean, I, I think that's that's where they'll be going with this. The, the public is any anybody who uh, arrives to go to, the, to, to attend the meeting. It's not limited to citizens of the jurisdiction that, that is holding the meeting. So, so potent, this is more of an issue actually in cities than counties probably. You know, city councils sometimes I think will ask me, well, they don't live in the city limits. Well, that's, that's not an issue. They're, they're a citizen. They're entitled to, 
to be at the meeting. Citizen, Citizen yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. I hope that was helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you bet.